Hi everybody, welcome back to Brand Bloggers. Uh, it's Marianne Weeks from Mari's World and Nadine Hill from Juggle Mom. And today in our third part of the series, we are gonna cover the very important topic of disclosure. Um, before we go any further, it is necessary to say that you must disclose if you are working for somebody or reviewing a product um, in, it, it, yeah, there has to be absolute transparency, doesn't there, Nadine? Oh, absolutely. And this is one of the big issues amongst bloggers and, and in general, because um, whilst we are bloggers and we're aware that, you know, you might read a review or something on somebody's site, and if they've been paid for that review then or, or the blog post, then it should be disclosed as a sponsored post or, you know, advertorial or whatever language you choose to use. But it, the relationship should be disclosed. But people outside of the blogging community, regular people out there who go to 95 jobs and read blogs and things that, you know, on an evening, they might not necessarily know that that content has been paid for, which is why it's important to be transparent and to make sure that um, you are disclosing if you've been paid for a post. Okay, so let's start off by looking at the, the times when we should really disclose. And obviously, the reviewing a product we've uh, already touched on. You're sent something for free. So a little note that lets the reader know that, look, I got this in return for writing a post is obviously one occasion. Um, wow. A second one that comes to mind would be the sponsored posts. Um, when somebody gets in touch with you and you create a post uh, and they ask you, uh, to you know to to review or to talk about or add a link to that post then again it's important that you add um, uh, sorry you add a disclosure to that um, what else can you add to those what other occasions can you think of well I think um, if you've been paid by a company um, you're working with a company maybe on other things um, there's clearly a relationship there so it's worth doing a, a a disclaimer of some kind. One of the examples of, of ways in which you might be working with a company but not be paid for the post would be, for example, if you're a brand ambassador for the company. Um, but yeah. they might not be paying you in cash for the post, but you've agreed to do a certain number of posts in return for you know some, uh, some high value product or a holiday or whatever. Um, yeah. In those cases, I actually like to do a little piece at the bottom of the post and it would say something like 2015 blog ambassador and then I'll say, you know, Juggle Mum is a blog ambassador for XYZ company. Yeah. And part of that relationship. We'll have a look at that in a yeah. second, can't we? Um, what about uh, um, sales from your blog? Do you know anybody who actually sort of gets commissioned from sales? Is that another moment where we should be disclaiming? So we're talking about affiliate linking, are we, Mara, here? Yes. Yes. Yeah, so again, yeah, affiliate linking. Um, if you've got affiliate linking on your site, I personally do on mine. Um, and so to disclose that, I have um, a, a, it's called a disclosure page. Yeah. yeah. It's not there. This blog will accept cash in form of this, that, and the other. I can't remember the exact wording it's on the site. But um, yeah, to, to, uh, to disclose that if somebody clicks through that link and makes a purchase, that a percentage of that purchase will come to you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, I suppose that's it's really only fair. fair. Yeah. And advertising. You've got advertising on your blog, haven't you? Yes, I do have advertising. I'm um, in one of the ad networks. The one I'm with is Mode, um, formerly known as Glam. It was Glam as well, Glam Mode, Glam slash Mode. Um, and they're, they're an ad network. They're not the only one. There are loads of other ad, ad networks out there. Um, and yeah, I, I do run advertising on the blog and, and earn an income from that on a monthly basis. Excellent. Okay. So if we move on, we, we could, I suppose we start looking at how to disclose. Yes, I spoke, yeah, because I jumped the gun a little, Mary, didn't I? <laughs> I <love you. laughs> Sorry, I always get carried away. We do have some notes that we're trying to follow. <laughs> we do have notes. <laughs> but yes, absolutely. Yeah, ways to disclose. So, for example, I mentioned the brand ambassador one, um, a way of putting it at the bottom of the post. Um, do do you, some people use images? Do you ever use images to disclose? I've never used that myself. I do think it's very um, common. I've seen it a lot over the place, and it's an excellent idea because just to insert an image at the end of the post is very simple, isn't it? And it's very clear to anybody reading 
you know, this is, um, I'm disclosing that I'm working, it's a working relationship. I think my most common one is to add a disclosure at the bottom. Uh, usually, uh, you know, XYZ sent us tickets to go to this certain place uh, on this day, thank you very much, um, in return for this post. Uh, you know, something along those lines there. So it's a statement at the bottom of the post. That's my most frequent one, this. Um, let's yeah, I absolutely agree. I do the same thing. Sorry if you didn't notice. I had a little earthquake then and my laptop nearly fell down. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, I do the same thing, Marion. But there are uh, companies that I've worked with when I've been doing a sponsored post who have asked for the disclosure not to be at the end of the post but right up at the beginning before oh. content and photos. And I like that. I, yes. I, I like that in... Yes. I like it, and, and in, a, in another, maybe a bit selfish way, I dislike it, but, and I'll explain in a minute. But I like it because it's clarity, and you're saying that this post is sponsored so the reader can choose to read or not. Yes. The other reason I don't, don't like it, and it's not that I don't like it, it's literally because my web design, um, it, some, the posts are truncated, um, so you only see the first line of the post. And it's like, I want readers to think, oh, this is a good post, and click yeah. through, but it, Let's first, this is a sponsored post. I must admit, if I see that, I'm more likely to jump off that post rather than read it. Because I exactly. think, oh, like, I really what it's going to yeah. be. I'd it rather find it at the end. Yeah. Yeah, and, and so I want them to click through because even if it is a sponsored post and even if I have been paid for it, there's still some great content in there. There might be some great Absolutely. tips or there might be something that would be useful. So that's the only purely selfish reason. <laughs> but I don't and always make thought disclosure was yeah another way that I've seen it uh, um, in you know around when I'm reading blogs is adding something to the title of the post so you've got uh, I don't know let's say uh, a nice spring clean hashtag review hashtag sponsored post um, I, I, I can see the using of the review in the t uh, in the title but I'm not too keen on sponsored post in the title how about you well it, sometimes uh, the company that you'd be working with on that sponsored post would insist on you using yeah. sponsored post in the title. So um, in that case, it's not a personal preference. It's following their rules. And, you yeah. know, fair, fair enough. It, it's being transparent and then people know. But, again, it plays buggery with your search engine optimization. <laughs> it does. It does. You're absolutely right. <laughs> up with new ideas anyway how to get around it doesn't it <laughs> that's it exactly but one way or another essentially the disclosure has to be there whether you put it at the top the bottom whatever and just always make sure that it is there because then you know you're not inadvertently breaking the rules <laughs> yeah in fact one one of the ways that i've seen and i'm really liking this um, and it's quite a recent one, is actually weaving it into the post itself. And I like that. So, um, I don't know, the other day, for example, at the weekend, we were asked to go to Legoland, let's mention it. So I've weaved that into the post. Legoland very kindly invited us to spend the day. And that basically, I am disclosing, um, you know, that we were invited. So we got it for free. I think I added a disclosure at the end of the post anyway, just to be on the safe side. But um, I think that's another nice way of, you know, getting it out, getting the message out there. I think that's a nice compromise as well because you're, for, as a content creator, we want our posts to sort of read very fluidly, don't we? We don't want all these jarring statements. And that's a nice way of being honest whilst having the post still read very pleasantly. Yeah. Yeah, it is. It's a nice start to the post, isn't it? Absolutely. Very good. So one one of the ways um, that p bloggers can make sure that they are following a disclosure policy, there are companies out there, and I think that we did you want to share a couple, Mari, of the, the places that bloggers can go to to find disclosure policies? Uh, well, I'm thinking of the networks off the top of my head. Uh, Brit Mums, Net Mums, Tots 100, uh, Mums Net. They've all got blogging sections where there's lots of information on all sorts of, uh, you know, the topics that we're talking about today. Yeah, and it's a great way of staying up to date with what's going on in the blogging community, isn't it? Because things are fast changing. Um, yeah. Things happen and, you know, Google updates an algorithm and everyone goes nuts. So. <laughs> yeah. And of course, you can always go in and ask 
um, a question and somebody will come back with your answer for you, which I find very, especially in the early days, I found that very, very helpful. Yes, absolutely. It's always better to get information from someone who's been there and done it, isn't it? Because they know what they're talking about. Absolutely. Okay, shall we move on to follow, no follow? <laughs> I love the way your voice just dipped when you said oh. follow, no follow. <laughs> Go on, is it something that's given you a headache, Mari? Or <laughs> it has done in the past, yes. I think I've nailed it. So my thinking is if I have struggled to get my head around it, I think a lot of other people will too. So I think it's a good idea if we bring that into today's um, discussion. Absolutely. I'd love to hear actually how you've struggled with it because that interests me because I, I felt it was pretty straightforward. So it would be interesting for me to understand. Uh, I think initially is oh, yeah, not when to use it. I think when to use it is very, very clear. You know, you are paid uh, to put a link in uh, and therefore it has to be no follow. I think what I struggled with was how to do the no follow. <laughs> because at the very beginning, you had to add a certain word code basically to the code of the link and that threw me every time the link wouldn't work um, but then I found a plugin from WordPress follow no follow so oh, what I have to do now is click on it and it will change it to follow or no follow which are, that to me is <laughs> that just takes me oh, a headache I'm rubbish at coding so that takes a whole headache away from me that's, that's interesting because um, what I did in the same situation, the um, piece of code that you're talking about is a parent thesis, A, H, ref equals blah, blah, blah. You've lost me, You've lost me already there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's, um, well, so the way I do it is I think in the early days what I did was actually copy, cut and paste um, a no-follow link that worked and I pasted it into my com – on my computer I had a text – document like notepad on my particular computer and I cut and paste it into there with the word the keywords that that no follow link was linked to this yes. sounds awfully complicated it really isn't but this is what I did and then every time I have to code a no follow link obviously your plugin is much simpler <laughs> but I just go in and cut out the address of the one that's in my little example and I yeah. insert the address of the website that I want to go to with a no follow and then I just change the the words which are the words that the, that link to that link yeah just like the anchor text so um, so I kind of, it, it is quite simple. It might sound a little complicated and over fussy, but it's, that's the way I do it now. Because, yeah. Well, I've, I've actually already got the code in there so that when I go and click on my no follow link, it opens up in a new window because I don't want people to go away from my blog. Absolutely. So I'm not going to blank. Yeah. In, yeah. I don't know if your follow no follow plugin would do that. Maybe it does. I'm not sure. I always, whenever I add a link, add um, tick the box. On, I'm on WordPress, so I tick a box to say open it in another window because I definitely don't want the reader jumping away at that moment from my post. Okay. Uh, you know, it's a choice. Also, when you read my blog, the link is in a different color. Um, so it's it's fairly obvious that you know you're gonna if you click on it you'll go somewhere else, um, and which again leaves the decision to the reader, not me. Yes, absolutely. That's that's so true. And then um, so the next thing I want to ask you, Mari, is have you had any experience with companies, maybe SEO companies, that have asked you not to disclose a post, and how have you handled that? Yes, I have. Yes, um, I think everybody has who's ever, you know, worked in blogging. Um, I've often gone back to them and, you know, mentioned that you do realize that Google will penalize my site and also whoever the brand is you want me to link to. Um, some of them are very, very uh, clever and they will try and get around it one way or another. Um, and others uh, realize they've been not caught out, but you know what I mean, that, that, that they're asking you some to do something that you shouldn't be doing. They walk away apologetically. And then it is entirely up to the blogger. You can either, because usually it's a, a fee that's there, um, you can accept that fee and go ahead and do a follow link if you wish. You know, who am I to say right or wrong? Uh, but just beware, I think, in the eyes of Google, it, you can be penalized and quite heavily too. 
I think we we all know bloggers who who have been is 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 blacklisted the correct term for it who've who've yeah. suffered at the yeah. hands of having this and it's a real shame because as bloggers we put a lot of time and effort into creating our sites and then to have everything whipped out from under you um yeah. it, it's kind of not worth it is it for you know what you're going to get 75 quid 100 quid <laughs> Yeah, but on the other hand, um, apart from the fact that for some people that money can come in quite handy, and we are working at the end of the day, on the other hand, I also put up posts and often forget to go back and use my plugin because I can only do it once it's live. So uh, every now and then I have to go back through recent posts and check, you know, what's follow, what's no follow. And if uh, I'm perfectly honest with you, I think it's all a pile of rubbish, seeing as one day, you know, uh, I'm talking about something that I really genuinely would like people to know about and it's just uh, you know of my own uh, experience so that would be a follow link um, yeah. and usually the posts that I accept on my blog and write about are ones that I'm genuinely interested in and want to talk about and it will touch on my own personal life anyway so um, absolutely You're I think absolutely that's right about. yeah it's it's the nature of what we do isn't it we we are writing on our blogs about things that are important to us and relevant to us and so you know I'm not going to waste my energy on going and doing something negative and talking about things I don't like I'm going to talk about things that I love sure well um, your energy writing about something that doesn't even re you know have any link at all to your real life exactly so so you would naturally in your content talk about brands and things that you love and you put follow links in there because you're not getting paid for it um but yeah it's, it is interesting just one thing i wanted to raise while you were talking i was just glancing over i've got an article here that was in pr week um it was on their website and it actually yeah. says it's about the asa and it's about bloggers and disclosure and it does say, it does say that bloggers mustn't falsely present themselves as consumers if it was a, an opinion but it's paid for you know it's a trading standards issue but it says here although the blogger would be named as part of any ASA investigation into misleading advertising the book stops with the advertiser so it's interesting that the companies that are asking you not to disclose they're kind of harming their client because if anything came of it, the book stops with the advertiser. Do the advertisers realize that these companies acting on their behalf? Are this, putting, yeah, it's funnily enough. I often get not no, it's not often. I get emails occasionally, let's say, uh, which refer to posts written two or three years ago, before all of this came about, asking me, "Oh, would you mind removing that link completely?" Um, because obviously Google's caught up with them in the meantime yeah it's interesting isn't it it's a fascinating subject and it's also one that is fast moving so I suppose our best advice to bloggers would be to maybe join the networks and to um, you know keep abreast with what's going on yes yes I think that's a, I think we've covered it pretty much haven't we today for disclosure was there anything else missing there well, no, I don't think so. I think that um, we, you know, we we briefly talked about the various ways we disclose and what could happen if you don't disclose and that kind of thing. So the next thing to do, we did mention the networks between us and about how being part of network the networks can um, help keep us up to date with what's going on. So in our next session, which is growing your blog with brands. No, is that right? Growing your blog with brands. Yeah. That is yeah. right, Mari. Um, in our next session, we're going to be talking a bit more about those networks. Fabulous. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so we'll see you next time. See you next time.